from Provo, Utah, this is the Ultimate Final Fantasy Podcast with your hosts, Joseph DeGolier and Caleb Schweiss. This is Ultima Final Fantasy. Welcome to another episode of Ultima Final Fantasy, the ultimate Final Fantasy podcast. I am your host, Caleb Schweiss. And I am your other host, Joseph de Gaulier. And I'm Caleb Craig. Not a host. Nope. Just a guest. (laughs) All right, so today we will be discussing none other than Hiroyuki Ito, the mastermind behind the Final Fantasy battle systems. And also, wasn't he in charge of some games that uh, are very important? Um... Yeah, he co-directed Final Fantasy VI and solely directed Final Fantasy IX, which is the most beloved Final Fantasy on, on our, our forums, forums yes. so <laughs> we will see what he can do Yeah, I'll, soon enough. I well, don't know. I'm pretty excited to revisit Final Fantasy IX, actually. Yeah, yeah. I, I can probably get past the artwork this time. But before we do our spotlight on Hiroyuki Ito, and before we get to the news... Because we always got to get to the news. Oh, yeah, of course. Before we do that, we do have a couple new iTunes reviews. Yes. Uh, the first one here is from the United States. It's uh, it's titled, So Good. Ooh. <laughs> you guys want it? Three, two, one. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, see, Caleb, you missed it that time. Mm. All right. This is by Willis39. It's a five-star review. He says... This podcast is exactly what I was looking for. Can't wait for FF8. Made it rhyme. Yeah. <laughs> it's just we'll, about time. And we'll make it rain, <laughs> FF8. You watch. Oh, yeah. We're going to have a few episodes on FF8. Yes. All right. So the second review comes from the United Kingdom, and it is entitled Need to be More Popular from Artois Sonic Strife. Artois? Sure. Or Artorius. Artorius? Oh, there's an R there. It's one of Sorry, my eyes said shit. Artois. Artois. Sonic Strife. Purely writing this review so you guys can climb the ranks. Climb because the you ranks. deserve it, quite frankly. You're funny. I love all the segments you do. And the fact that it's weekly is awesome. Keep it up, guys. Artorius. Artoria. Artoria. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Is that German? Artorius. Something. It was no, something. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> He's a member of the forums too. He is. Yeah, oh, he recently he... joined. It's oh, cool. sweet. Thank you, Artorius, for joining the forum and for giving that wonderful review. And uh, I think it's time for the news, guys. What do you think? I think it is. Oh yeah. wait, wait, wait! I got to talk about something. Oh, the uh, the best of episode next week. At the end of this podcast. We are going to announce the nominees for the first annual 2014 UFF Podcast Awards. And so be sure to listen to what the nominees are, and then get on our website and vote as soon as you hear the nominees. UltimaFinalFantasy.com, it'll be the first post that you see. Yeah, we really need your help with it because there's like... There's like three people that have voted as of right now. And there are three people who chose nominations. We now have a list of nominations. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to add it together a thing. It'll be on the the end of this episode. Yep, so help us out and uh, tell us what you like. Yeah. All right, now let's get to the news. Okay. All right. News. 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 All right, so what do we got first in news here? Well, our first piece of news, last week we, of course, talked about Mevious Final Fantasy being announced, and I'm not sure if we actually got to this. Uh, It's a new game that's, you know, going to be kind of like the old Final Fantasies, Final Fantasy 1 in particular, Mm -hmm. and uh, it's going to be released in 2015, and I think that's all we knew. What we now know is that it's going to be a mobile game available on Apple devices and Android devices. Okay. So, that's really it for that. <laughs> oh, exciting. Yeah, so, as far as Mevious Final Fantasy goes, 
very mysterious game. Yeah, we'll keep you updated, though. Yeah. All right, so second up, there was a vigil for a dying player in Final Fantasy XIV. Yes. Uh, the article reads, The Gilgamesh server was witness to the Brotherhood of World Gamers where a dying player was the honorary recipient of a stunning vigil. The dying player, known as Codex Va- Valda, sorry, yeah. who was a level 50 bard, according to Kotaku, so he's probably like level 10, <laughs> was immediately rushed to the hospital after he suddenly collapsed. You think anybody who, like, does shit at Kotaku, like, listens to us and is like, come on, guys, stop making fun of Kotaku. You know, if they weren't so easily picked apart, maybe it wouldn't be a problem. Yeah, maybe. All right, so... They've been the source of many false... And- like news items that we've had yeah they'll just jump on and they're like oh this must mean this so let's make a giant article about it that actually doesn't say anything exactly (laughs) the title will be like final fantasy 15 released (laughs) and then it won't say anything about that (laughs) all right so anyway the dying player known as codex valda who was a level 50 bard according to kotaku was immediately rushed to the hospital after he suddenly collapsed a player known as... He didn't collapse in the game. He collapsed in real life. Yes. yes. A player known as Pat Min was able to document the situation. He stated that Valda was suffering from renal failure and things were not looking good back then. The saddest part is that prior to his collapse, a donor was already in line. A member of his company shared the tragedy with all players on the Gilgamesh server. The gamers on the server banded together and held a vigil in Codex Valda's honor. Players started appearing in the free company house and peacefully showed their respect for a dying friend. The entire event was streamed and documented on IMGUR... I'm not sure Imager. If Imager, okay. Sorry, dude. I <laughs> really don't give a shit about what that is. Right, right. And his family was witness to an amazing outpour of support from gamers all over the world. All of it shows the Codex was loved and cared by many people all over the world, even though he was not aware of it. Thanks to Final Fantasy XIV, these fans were able to share their condolences. That's a nice little story. And yeah, I, that's pretty I, I sweet. I found that when we were doing the news thing. <laughs> yeah. I was looking at news, and I was like, oh, that's cool. Yeah, that's, that's um, awesome. It's cool to see, you know, the Final Fantasy XIV community not be completely douchebaggery. Yeah, can you imagine if that was League <laughs> of Legends? Yeah, no. They'd be like, no. go die! Yeah. <laughs> Noob? Yeah. I'm reporting you because you suck. <laughs> Go fuck off. You collapsed in the middle of a fucking game. What's wrong with you? GG, <laughs> asshole. <laughs> yeah, that's how, that's how it would be. <laughs> All right, so our next piece of news for Final Fantasy fourteen comes from Polygon.com. And uh, the, in the upcoming expansion for Final Fantasy fourteen, Heaven's Word, um, during... The, fi- the fan festival event in Tokyo, uh, there a new playable race was introduced, and it's called the Ao Ra A U space R A, and uh, they're a tall, lean race with long tails, scales, and horns sprouting from their heads, and uh, they're sexually is it sexual dimorphism when the two are different, I, I male think and so. female? Okay. The male and female Aura uh, are going to be sexually dimorphic. Okay. So that's going to be interesting. Like, they'll look completely different, but yet still be of the same species. Uh, Also announced two new jobs. Um, The damage-focused machinist, who can wield guns and craft turrets. And the healing-focused astrologian... Um, who uses magic to help buff up other party members. So basically, like, the sentinel job in Final Fantasy XIII. Yeah. So, yeah, that was cool. There's always news coming out for Final Fantasy XIV, I feel. Yeah, they are really keeping up to date on that one. Yeah. All right. So next, we have the most important piece of news for Final Fantasy XV. Yep, some some little tidbits of information about uh, the upcoming game. And it's from Polygon.com, so you don't have to worry about it being complete shit. I think they're actually quoting Kotaku. Are you serious? Yeah. All right, so maybe it is. I'm sorry. It's Polygon.com, but I think in their article they said it came from Kotaku, uh, and Kotaku was taking it from Famitsu. Mm. So, 
The translation's probably all fucked up. Yeah, probably. <laughs> all right, so it says, Speaking with Famitsu, director Hajime Tabata explained that in battle, party members can unite to perform more powerful attacks. Although the mechanic is still in progress, Tabata said that the plan is to use a system where players must time their button presses to pull off such attacks. In battle, players will be able to equip, equip multiple weapons simultaneously. However, players will have a main weapon to fight with. This weapon will determine special attacks the player can perform. Unlike past games where MP corresponded to a player's magic, Final Fantasy XV will use MP for special moves. Oh, really? Yeah. Few details <laughs> about the system were provided, though Tabata said MP could be used for moves to dodge or evade attacks. What's the difference? Tabata also added that summons, a staple of the Final Fantasy franchise, will only be usable by Noctis. See, that was probably the biggest piece of of news for me. Yeah. Only available. Is it going to be like Final Fantasy XIII, where you can only control Noctis? Maybe. One player, you know? I think it is. I think the other characters are just AI, yeah. That's okay, then. It doesn't matter at that point. I mean. But yeah, you can have certain moves where everybody kind of... Yeah, and like have them join in. Yeah, that should be interesting to see. When That's we... actually a similar mechanic to Persona. Whenever, whenever we finally see it. Yeah. Persona. Yeah. I played a little I've never bit. Played Persona. I played a little bit of it. You only like control like one dude, and then the other guys can like act on their own, but they help you out okay. in the fights. But mm-hmm. you can like combine attacks. It's kind of cool. Well, I was thinking Kingdom Hearts is kind of the same way, where you always have yeah. Donald and Goofy. Donald and Goofy in your don't party, really. but yeah. like they. They help, they support, and you can kind of have little gambits so that they will do certain things. Yeah, they'll things. do certain things, yeah. Um, but it is really just you. Yeah, I wonder if it's going to... As Sora, I wonder if they're going to set up some kind of gambits like that for uh, 15. I bet they will. For the other characters. Just because of the, the past Final Fantasy games yeah. and Kingdom Hearts. I mean, Considering like you have like six dudes on your they've team They've got or to. Something. Yeah. Like, if you have no control over those guys except for yeah. the combo moves, I don't think I don't think players would be very happy. Yeah, yeah that'd be ridiculous. you got to set some kind of thing up. Uh, you know, we could always be wrong about that anyway. Yeah, yeah who knows. <laughs> All right, so I think that ends it for our news segment today. we got a spotlight. Yes, we do. Hiroyuki Ito. Let's get to it. joined Square Enix in 1987, when it was still Squaresoft, obviously, after graduating from Tokyo Zokei University. I'm probably mispronouncing that, but whatever. (laughs) Ito participated in creating the turn-based battle system in the first Final Fantasy, citing the NFL, of all places, as a great influence for the strategy and gameplay. This gave us the popular and, in my opinion, preferred side-to-side view for enemies and players as opposed to the first-person view that was popular in other RPGs at that time. Like Dragon Quest, right? You played Dragon Quest? I did play Dragon Quest. And uh, that had the first-person view. Yeah, it's weird. There are a lot of older games that have the first-person view. Ah, It's crazy. (laughs) Ito claims to have created the battle system for Final Fantasy with no RPG playing experience. That's pretty impressive. I think that's bullshit. That's what he know, says. He's a, you know, I think he's just, you know, spinning a... <laughs> spinning a tail. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, and he's obviously a Japanese game producer, director, and game designer for Square Enix. And he's directed a number of Final Fantasy games, including 6, 9, and 12. And, of course, 6 he directed alongside Yoshinori Kitase, 9 he did by himself, and 12, it was some other guy... There's a couple guys that they had. We'll talk about that later. Okay. Ito is also credited as the creator of the Active Time Battle System. And he was responsible for the battle systems in Final Fantasy 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, 12, and Caleb Craig's absolute favorite, Final Fantasy Tactics. It is my favorite. It's a really good game. So, he wasn't in charge of the, uh... Was he in charge of the first Final Fantasy, you said? No, uh... Final Fantasy 1 through 3, he was actually just a debugger. Okay. But he did create the battle system in Final Fantasy 1. He just wasn't in charge of it. He Okay. He had the idea. All right. 
So after creating the battle system for Final Fantasy, Ito worked as a debugger for the second and third installments of the series, mm -hmm. where he worked on creating the sound effects for these two games. That's interesting that he went from, like, battle system to sound effects. I know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they just, well, we got an opening. They don't have you, very many employees. You, come remember. over here. They do now. They didn't yeah. then. Yeah, definitely not then. Ito is also responsible for designing the AP system found in Final Fantasy V. He is also the creator of Final Fantasy V's job system, as well as co-directing Final Fantasy VI which, with legendary Yoshinori Kitase, which we uh, did a spotlight episode on. Ito also created the Esper and Relic system, which are two of the best systems in the entirety of the Final Fantasy series. I believe that is an opinion, isn't it, Kale? <laughs> it is, but I really like those systems. Uh, it's a lot better than what he did in 8, but we'll talk about that later. So he d he designed 8s also? He did. Mm -hmm. Okay. Kind of screwed up. <laughs> <laughs> it was his only failure. Uh, I love the job system in Final Fantasy V. Yeah. He, I he really do does too. seem to be like the dude that's in charge of the gameplay so far in the series, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah. he uh, he's pretty much made everything I love about Final Fantasy. Well, that's good. I'm glad we had you here then. <laughs> Except All right. for the stories. I don't think he's really... That no, he's about. not the... A real Not story a guy. Yeah. yeah, he's more of a gameplay a gameplay type guy. All right. All right. So shortly after his work on Final Fantasy VI, Ito lent his masterful hand towards the creation of Final Fantasy Tactics, where he designed the game and battle system. He's credited with creating the charge time battle system and refined the already kick-ass job system in Final Fantasy V. He would then begin to work on the Black Sheep of the series. Final Fantasy VIII. <laughs> That's a lot of That's opinions in there. No, it's not a. It's not an opinion. It's how does the job system work in, in Final Fantasy Tactics, Caleb? Because I, we can't be the only Final Fantasy players that haven't really played that much of it. Well, the way that it works in Tactics is pretty much like five. Each of your characters will be able to have a job class, and they will gain uh, abilities through uh, whatever you do. Something you get experience points, which levels up your character. And he gets certain stats for whatever job your character is in. And then you get job points, which also, uh, when they accumulate, they're like the AP for in Final Fantasy V. When right, they accumulate, you're right. able to buy certain abilities, which then allow you, your characters to become stronger. And then like in V, you can use those uh, certain abilities in different classes when you uh, attach them to your character. What do you mean, we... I had like a 15 hour tactics game. Oh, did you really? Yeah. Okay. Just I got to me. Like the hardest... Just me. I have not played <laughs> tactics yet, okay? I am sorry. Grouping <laughs> me up with you. <laughs> well, I know you haven't finished it. I see you're you right. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ito again returned as the battle designer for Final Fantasy VIII. He created the Guardian Force System, Junction System, fuck that, and the infamous Triple Triad card game. That's all right. Ito would solely direct his first Final Fantasy game when Final Fantasy IX came along. I mean, after making what we, me and the Calebs, <laughs> believe to be really great game design systems, he mm -hmm. kind of loses his footing on Final Fantasy VIII. Yeah, it's like a really good... It, it, it's like a really good idea but wasn't executed very well. Right. It's kind of the thing with 8. Like, they could have mixed it with 6, as we've talked about, where instead of drawing the magic, you got the magic from the espers, from, like, certain amounts of battles, and then you unlocked it. It could have been, like, a mix between 4 and 6 and what 8 is. Because, like, in 4, when you level up, you gain new spells, right? Right. So when you level up your GFs, they are you can produce more magics, better spells, and you can get those from the GFs. That would have been kind of cooler. Instead of having to draw it from... You know, I think the biggest problem with the system in Final Fantasy VIII is the leveling along with the junction system. Because I don't know why they decided that if you level up, the enemies also level up with you. Like, what's the point in leveling up in Final Fantasy VIII? So the junction system is either used to... I mean, it's just used to cheat, Pretty much the, the leveling system. Yeah. So you're going, you're you're fixing one broken thing with another broken thing. Kinda. We'll get more into detail with that on eight, though. Yeah. There there are good things about eight. We'll yeah. Um, 
Final Fantasy IX marked Hiroyuki Ito's first solely directed Final Fantasy game. Aside from directing the plot for this title, so he was kind of a story guy, Ito also designed the game, created the active time event where players can see things that are happening in real time at another location. So, and created the active time event. Yeah. Uh, Final Fantasy IX used these mainly for short, optional scenes. Ito was also the creator of Magnet and the slightly less infamous Tetra Master card game. I only say that because you actually it actually plays more part of the story than the one in eight. Mm-hmm. The one in eight I always get rocked too. Like even when I had good cards, it's like now this one's mine. Forever. <laughs> <laughs> like, damn it. Ito wrote the entirety of Zidane, the game's protagonist dialogue, and is responsible for his flirtatiousness towards women in the game. Is that because he did he was not a flirtatious man himself in real life? I'm not sure. It didn't uh, it didn't say. Maybe he was. Like, I would like to make Zidane what I wish to become. Maybe he was a romantic <laughs> at heart. He wished to be some kind of monkey man. Yeah. In 2001, Square officially announced Final Fantasy 12 for the PlayStation 2 and came out with it much much later, <laughs> 2006. It's weird they were working on like 10, 11, and 12 at the same time, but 12 just took ages longer. Right. Has 15 surpassed 12's de- development time? I think so, if you count... Because uh, I think 12, at one point, had the world record for longest game development. 13, uh, 15's doesn't really count, though, because it used to be 13 versus, versus oh, 13. Well, so that's, that's, that's... Yeah, it is kind of bullshit. <laughs> I don't think changing the name should change the development time. I don't either, but I, I've... I don't know. We'll have to check. We'll see if they still count it. Whoever they is. The Guinness Book of World Records. (laughs) So the development was being led by... That's where I read that. Yasumi Matsuno and none other than Hiroyuki Ito. Dun, dun, dun. Yes. In 2005, Square Enix announced that Matsuno had left the company but would remain as a supervisor for the game. And this left Ito and Minagawa, the replacement for Matsuno, to spearhead the direction of the game. Ito's biggest marks on Final Fantasy XII are the game design and an update from his famous active time battle system into the active dimension battle system. He also created the license board and the also infamous Gambit system. Ito was also the creator of the international version Zodiac Job System, which looks like a combination between the regular license board from Final Fantasy XII and the job system from Final Fantasy V. It looks really cool. Are we sure which version we have? Because I know we haven't done that much research. We don't have the international version. Okay. Because I don't have that job board because it looks way better than what I was using. (laughs) So when working on a game, Ito attempts to balance the story and events with the gameplay. Um, I feel like that's... I don't know. I don't feel like that's true with Final Fantasy XII. I think it's more gameplay based, but, you know, whatever. Yeah. Maybe with nine. Uh, He believes it to be important for Final Fantasy to keep the game's fun to play no matter how much uh the technology advances ito begins by focusing on the game's gameplay and then adapts it to the story during story development uh he charges himself with the task of smoothly implementing gameplay with the story well so that those in charge of the game story don't have to worry about this aspect he has stated that the most important factor in the final fantasy series is making the players feel accomplished after completing the games. That is a good thing to do. I you mean, definitely feel accomplished after completing Final Fantasy XII. Yeah. <laughs> it is done. It is a long game to, it's true. to get through. So Ito has derived most of his inspiration for his battle systems from professional sports. Ito's main inspiration for his active time battle system was Formula One Racing where Ito came up with the idea to give characters different speed values based on, right. I guess, seeing a race. I think we talked about that in the Final Fantasy VI episode. Yeah, I think we mentioned it. Hmm. So Ito created Active Time Battle because he felt that real-time battles would become the standard in future gaming markets, but felt that too much of an action element would alienate the RPG players. Really? Well, that's I, where we're going with 15. Yeah, that's what I thought when I was <laughs> reading about it. I was like, well, I wonder how he feels about that. <laughs> Like, no, 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 please. <laughs> Alienate, no. <laughs> Ito has stated that he wishes to refine the active dimension battle system for Final Fantasy XII in a future Final Fantasy game. 
16, maybe? <clears throat> yes. He wants to remove unnecessary features and add ones he felt were lacking from the system. In September of 2012, Ito stated that the optimum form of his active dimension battle ideas have yet to come due to hardware restrictions. That was in 2012. Yeah, I know. Yeah. That was PS3. Right. It's yeah, he's basically stated that he's so badass in his like ideas that like nothing can handle it yet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> feel like this is all the more reason to come to the pc is that your little note there yeah i think the pc could handle a little more than the mm. consoles and perhaps they'll think the same way i mean we're hoping they've always teased us with it like with uh 15 they're like oh it could be on pc and they're like nah nah it doesn't have to be it will be eventually at some point in the future maybe not the near future yeah maybe not maybe the far away future yes Apart distinct. from his work on battle systems and game directions, Ito has written a few tracks for the Final Fantasy games. He wrote the theme song for Final Fantasy IX titled Melodies of Life. Not as bad as Eyes on Me. No, yeah, yeah. A song composed Actually, by... Actually, quite a lot better. <laughs> yeah. A song composed... More better. Damn it. More better. A song composed <laughs> by none other than Nibu Uematsu and performed in Japanese and English by Emiko... Shiratori, which is cool when they do both. It's, it's less weird, I think. He wrote the lyrics for some of the tracks in Final Fantasy V, Dear Friends, an album for Final Fantasy V music, obviously, featuring live instruments, high-quality synthesized sounds, and lyrics. Ito also wrote the song, I know, synthesized. <laughs> Approaching I, I'm, Premonition. I'm, I just hate synthesized shit. Yeah. I'm one of the few. I'm, well, it does age really poorly, I agree with you. Like, everything they did when we were younger just sounds bad. Well, here's the thing. Bad. You can hear, like, synthesized music from the beginning of synthesized music, like in Queen and stuff. Mm -hmm. And they use it really sparingly. But, the like, the, the music that has a lot of, or, like, fake-ass organ in it... Mm-hmm. It doesn't age well. And then you're looking at, like, 80s soundtracks, like the Terminator 1 soundtrack. It's, it has not aged well. <laughs> and then we go up to the 90s. Let's say you're watching Silence of the Lambs, which has kind of like a techno beat to it in some of the parts. Mm -hmm. That part, like, makes you automatically think it's a 90s movie. And so, like, someone like David Fincher making the decision to do all of his soundtracks with the electronic, you know, crap... Uh, because he made that decision, ten years from now, you wouldn't even have to like turn on the movie. Just turn on the sound. You'll know exactly when that movie was made. Yeah. <laughs> because that's how electronic sound ages. That's true, and that's why we're. It really not bugs fans. me, and that's <laughs> I. I play real instruments. <laughs> yeah. Actually, except for the, the drums. keyboard, is just you know an extension of the piano, but it's still the synthesized stuff. It just doesn't sound as good. Right. All right. So. Shh about the drum thing. Yeah. <laughs> High quality synthesized sounds and lyrics. Ito also wrote the song Approaching Premonition, quote unquote, from the Final Fantasy VI special track album. This album features Nobu Uematsu as the lead singer, which sounds awesome, and the entire Final Fantasy VI development team as the background and chorus singers, including Ito. Huh. And he wrote the lyrics for that. I've never heard that. Yeah, me neither. That sounds kind of cool. You're like, all right, now we're done with the game. Let's, uh,. Let's all sing. It's <laughs> the Square Enix musical. Yeah. <laughs> like, we're going to work you to death. <laughs> we're going to work you to death. Is that yeah. how it goes? Yeah. Okay. Ito has received much praise from big names in Square Enix. For example, even though I think he is a big name, in July of 2012, Tetsuya Nomura said he considers Hiroyuki to be one of his four seniors and an influence on his own battle system. Nomura also stated in a 2014 interview that Ito taught him the basics of game design. In August of 2012, uh, Sohei Shinkawa, I'm sorry, uh, the creator of the Disegia series? Disegia? Disgia? Is that how you say that? I'm pretty sure. I never that's, how, that's how I've heard it pronounced by people, so I'm, yeah. okay. I think that's how it's... Cited Ito as his inspiration to join the game industry. I can see that. I played a little bit of that game, and it plays a lot like Tactics. Does yeah. It? Yeah. Okay. It looks similar. I don't I've think I've so. even heard of that game. There's I, like there's a huge uh, like game series of that. Yeah, there's, there's like, a lot there's of like them. There's like six games okay. in there. I'm an idiot. I checked out their site. <laughs> 
So Ito's favorite Final Fantasy game is Final Fantasy VI, and his favorite characters so in the Amy series. Amy and Ito agree right, yeah, now, yeah. right now. His favorite characters in the series are Locke Cole and Zidane Tribal. Hiroyuki is also credited with the dialogue for fan favorites and comic reliefs, Gilgamesh and Ultros. Yeah. He also designed uh, the Ultros battles. Ultros is not my favorite, but you know. He's a pain in the own. ass, yeah. Gil- <laughs> Gilgamesh is sweet, though. He also designed the battles for the introduction of these characters, Final Fantasy V, of course, being the intro to Gilgamesh, and VI being Ultros' realm. And Ito also received a special thanks in Dissidia XII Final Fantasy, the weirdest name ever, due to his input on Final Fantasy XII's protagonist Vaughn's fighting style. Hmm. Ito also makes a cameo appearance as an enemy in the developer's room of Final Fantasy IV. That's cool. Beat on him if you want. (laughs) (laughs) Certainly, Hiroyuki Ito has been and will remain a powerhouse of influence on the future of Final Fantasy and RPGs as a whole. His innovations are one of the largest in this great series of games, and we are excited to see what the future will hold for us players of Ito's masterpieces. I think Caleb wrote this one. Yeah. <laughs> Craig? No, you. you oh. Know, shit. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> Just so much dick sucking in this one. Hey, he's good. Yeah, that's what you gotta give him to. That's what he likes. So, what do you find so good about Hiroyuki Ito's work, Caleb? Well, the battle system was designed by him. I mean, that's what makes these games. They're games before they're stories. I mean, I know we love the stories in Final Fantasy, but if the gameplay was wretched, we wouldn't play them. That's that's just a fact. I mean, I wouldn't play these damn things if it wasn't fun. Well, we played Final Fantasy 2. The gameplay was still enjoyable to some aspects. <laughs> but yeah, you're kind of right. It's more story for that one. But I feel like we would have never gotten into the series if they weren't fun to play. You we forced so? ourselves to play the early ones. That's true. Knew. That's true. But yeah, I don't think we would have played them if it wasn't fun. I think that's what a game is, primarily, is fun. Yeah, I agree with that. I, you know, I didn't know most of this stuff before, like, we decided to read up on this guy, and I kind of felt the connection between, like, the the battle systems in 6, 8, and 9. I was like, I bet the same guy did all of those. And then I found out it was Ito, and then I was like, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. And uh, I feel like 8 was close to being something great but i think they might have rushed him on it and maybe, so like maybe it, it was a rush production because i know at that point they were coming out with a final fantasy like every year yeah, yeah. they were going all call with of duty style of seven, on it. i think so maybe everything maybe it was just rushed and they just didn't and he just had to like slap whatever ideas he had in there and just yes because it does like it does feel kind of incomplete and it does have a, like a similar feel to sixes yeah it does not so. nearly as perfected or refined I don't think but yeah and then nines is great so there are rumors going around that 16 is going to be helmed by Hiroyuki Ito yeah I, I heard that and I was pretty excited for that do you think this new system that? that he's talking about when he you know said what he did in, in uh, 2012 do you think that's the system that we're going to see in 16 if he's directing it yes if he's a big part of the battle system, I think so. I certainly hope so. And they said that it was probably going to be a return to the older Final Fantasy style. That's true. They have said that. So, you know, he might have job classes in that, since that seems to be his specialty. <laughs> they might, yeah. He had that in uh, Tactics 5 uh, and in uh, 12 that for that That will be interesting to see, because if, if he is, in fact, in charge of Final Fantasy 16... How is 15 going to look in the grand scheme of things later down the road? It's going to look weird. It is going to be kind of the odd one out. Yeah. Well, 13 is already kind the, of the odd one besides out. Besides the online ones, I completely disagree about 13 being the odd one out. Well, 13 was... and 10 are very similar. Yeah, but 10, I think, is... In, in what way? Story. They're both... The gameplay is very similar. It's the uh, right... It's... They both the have... gameplay? Okay, really? They... They both have ten hours of cutscenes. Mm-hmm. They both have the hallway. Believe it or not, ten oh, I know has they, the hallway. I know they're both hallways, but like the the gameplay in thirteen is different. That's what I meant. Like the gameplay progression. Yeah. yeah, but the, the gameplay is still based on active time battle. 
in in some way. It's well, still there. Fifteen's like going around the world is I feel like, like cause supposed to be fairly similar to the other games, isn't it? Fifteen's is supposed to be an action RPG. Yeah. Going around the world, I think you're supposed well, to be you're able like to you drive, drive the, in car the car and stuff. Yeah, you have to right. go to gas stations. So that'll be nice, but who knows if it's a hallway or not? Yeah, we don't really. If know it's yet. a hallway. It'll still feel they, like Final they, Fantasy. You know, <laughs> they, they might not do the hallway since they have that for the last few games. Yeah, well, 13, I guess thirteen and ten, but twelve and fourteen are no, no. Well, no, yeah, no hallway, no hallway yeah. for those whatsoever. <laughs> and I actually like the battle system in twelve more than thirteen, so I'm excited to see what he can do to refine it. Twelve was, I think, too much for me to handle at the time. We'll see how it feels when you go through it again, though. Yeah, I mean, it could uh, age better. Going through it again, it could it could age better. I did enjoy thirteen later on, but uh, twelve. After I got the bell, bubble belt, I think when I finally like figured out how the game went, and I just kind of like beat it, <laughs> uh, or like how to use the gambit system and everything correctly. Yeah. yeah. At that point, I think I was enjoying twelve a lot more. Yeah, the gambits, I've complained about them before, and I'll always complain about them. You let the game play itself, but it is kind of nice just controlling one dude. It makes mm-hmm. it a lot easier. And then you can actually focus on the tactics while they're basically supporting you. Mm-hmm. And that's that's how I beat 8, you know? Like, I just had one guy doing the damage, essentially, and oh, everyone else. you just announced that you beat 8. I already announced it on Twitter. Oh, you did? Yeah, I said, <laughs> it is done. That's what I say every time. <laughs> Jeez, get on the Twitter, Joe. <laughs> I guess I could have been done with anything. Whenever you're talking to us on the Twitter, you're talking to Schweiss. Yeah, it's always me. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I think he is an important guy to the Final Fantasy series. I think Kitase may be a little bit more special in my heart uh, because of the games that Kitase is connected to. But uh, Yeah, Kitase directed some really good games. Ido with 6, 9, and 12 is, is a very important player in the Final in the uh, Square Enix uh Family, Square Enix family, yes, yeah, definitely. And since he created like the job class system in Five that you guys really like, and then the active time battle that's like associated with Final Fantasy, that's and the side by side battle system, that's all him. That's really as, uh, like that's, that's final. Like, that, that is Final Fantasy. Exactly. As far as gameplay goes, yes, I would I would say he's very important. Yeah, I think in the story department he may not be as strong as some other people well, in the it, one of his quotes that I saw before said that he just like let's he focuses on the gameplay so that right, the people we writing the story could uh, could Maybe just focus you on that, do that. <laughs> <laughs> well nine story from what I remember nine is is good well, one six yeah. story is way good so. yeah six is, is way good but it also had many other people in charge of many different things yeah yeah it did yeah all right, so I think that's going to end it uh, for our discussion. Let's move on. So, the first spot, the FF, is Dead Fantasy from uh, Gammon Stark, and I didn't even know well, about Gammon this. Gammon Stark didn't make it. He posted it yeah, on the Yeah, he, he, just, he just posted it. <laughs> I didn't even know about... I don't about... think he made it anyway. <laughs> I didn't even know this thing existed until I saw this post, and it's a fan-made series of videos of Final Fantasy characters fighting dead or alive characters. Right, and it's animated. It's computer animated. Yeah. With has, some very convincing 3D models. Yeah, of the it's got the graphic equivalent of like Final Fantasy 10. Yeah, PlayStation 2 era. Yeah, so. yeah. I, I do remember these from quite a few years ago. I'm not sure exactly when they came out. Just look it up on YouTube. It's called Dead Fantasy. There's like a dozen videos out there, I think. Yeah, there's quite a few. And they're basically just really long fight scenes of Final Fantasy characters and what was it, Dead or Alive? Dead or Alive characters. Yeah, so I mean, if you liked Advent Children, this is definitely for you. (laughs) Because it's basically the same. Yeah, just Dead or Alive instead. And our 
our next Spy the FF is also from uh, Gamut Stark. He says, Thanks to Ren FM for posting about Final Fantasy thir- 14. Uh, it reminds him of about this webcomic. He's into Final Fantasy. This, this webcomic, I think, is called Real Life Comics. Yeah. So you can go look up Real Life Comics. Um, he loves Final Fantasy. When it's in the news, he tends to have three or four comics come out on the subject. Uh, although you may have to fi- uh, hunt through the archive to find a few. Um, so Gammon Stark posted a link to one of the comics, and we're just going to read it for you in case you're interested in, look- in looking this up. It's called Real Life Comics. Let's see, reallifecomic.com? Yeah. Reallifecomics.com. Which, although I've never heard of, uh, he seemed looks pretty popular. Okay, shit. My the phone just like freaked out on me. <laughs> Hold on. Have you guys heard of this before? I haven't. No, I read the comic, but I okay. honestly don't remember what it's about. So All right, this new twice. You're gonna be. Let's have you be that guy. Can you read that? Yeah, I'm good now. Okay, and I'll be the other guy. Okay, so panel one, Caleb is sitting at a computer. (laughs) (laughs) That sounds about right. And Joe is standing behind him. Okay, check this out. I just found this on the web. What's that? Apparently, at E3, they did a tech demo where they redid the opening sequence to Final Fantasy VII, and this video is rendered real time. Okay. Check that out. Holy crap. Eris is human. All this time, I thought she was some kind of... Chibi demon. Wow. She's actually kind of hot now. Right? I mean, for a computer-rendered three-dimensional model of a fictional, of a fictional character. With boobs. With boobs. <laughs> anyway, that's copyright 2005 um, from Real Life Comics. And uh, we just read a copyrighted material thing on our podcast. Awesome. Anyway, so that's going to be it for us about the FF this week. Uh... I think it's time for the question segment. Okay. We can do that. Okay, so just so that you guys know, we have been having episodes that have gone over an hour by quite a bit lately. And a big part of that is our question segment. So we're going to try to keep the question segments short but sweet and try to keep our episodes at about an hour. So sometimes the questions may not get answered, but they will eventually get answered. We're just going to start answering questions in the order that we get them. Are we okay with that, Schweiss? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's fine. Okay. I, so the, don't feel too bad if your question was left out. Yeah, one of the reasons why... Because we'll get to it eventually. Yeah, and one of the reasons why we want to do this is because uh, the space issues, and we want to kind of do more of the commentaries, and if we keep having hour-long question segments, there's, like, no room for commentaries. <laughs> unless we're going to be, like, just paying out the ass for the <laughs> giant amounts of space. Right, and the week that we don't get any questions, we still have questions to go back to. Yeah, so, I mean, don't don't feel pressured to to post questions unless no, you really No, feel pressured to post questions. They just might not get answered that week. Yeah, we're not we're not, not answering them. We're just answering them in order, I guess. So. We just had to say that real quick. Yeah. Let's get to our first question, a question that we skipped last week. Yes. It's titled Bam Cornelia. Oh yeah. From Ren FM, a black mage on our forum. He says he asks, rather, how do you think the Heroes of Light in FF1 reached the remote kingdom of Cornelia? This is right at the beginning of the game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you think they are from Cornelia? Do they know each other? I guess it was supposed to start like the original Zelda or a D&D game, but I'm interested to see what other people think. One theory I have is they summons, like, spoiler, Titus, but he's a dream. <laughs> so, the first answer we got on the forums was from none other than Void, who's a samurai with Giltas on the forums, and he says 
isn't it left very vague? I remember there being almost no story in FF1 besides the pre-roll. That's accurate. That's true. That's an interesting question, though. Maybe they were just wandering, just a wandering pack of extremely low-level heroes. I don't know how they didn't die on the way there. You know, that's true. Let's argue semantics with Final Fantasy (laughs) 1. I remember... All right, Shinru, Shinru, Ultima Weapon on the forums, also says he remembers reading that they were created and brought to the world by the light, quote-unquote, or cosmos solely for the purpose of being warriors of light and defeating chaos. So it could be that they were just created and put there when you start the game. No names, levels, or anything. Basically newborn adults. Okay, we're good. Um, I think Shinru brings up a good point, although I don't think it ever specifically says that anywhere in the game at all. You just start in Cornelia, you get there, you're holding four orbs, or whatever. Yeah. Four orbs or four crystals, depending on your version of your game, and then you walk up to the nearest thing, which is the castle, and then the king says, hey, you must be the four warriors of light, right? So the assumption is, because you get to name your own characters, whatever, that your characters don't have a past. Now... Certainly, Ren FM has his own idea of what their past could be, mm-hmm. why they're in Cornelia. But I think Shinder's answer is is the most believable in that point. Is that you know the cosmos in order to fix you know what what Garland is going to do, uh, they bring out the four warriors of light. Okay. To save the world. So I wonder if the four warriors of light is like a code name. Kind of like 007, where you know there are numerous four warriors of light, and there are <laughs> there are warriors of light in numerous games. Right, Maybe it's kind of like that. The first three, I believe, have four warriors of light. Yeah, it's a code so. name I bet from the cosmos. <laughs> it's sweet. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty sweet. Anyway, that's my answer for it. You guys have anything to add? No, yeah, I don't even think they even thought about it. Honestly, they just started. They the just game. said, you know, these are the players, and they are the warriors of light. Yeah, I don't think they worried about that at the time. So it's kind of like, as he was saying, a Legend of Zelda. I think game. they were the warriors of yes. light in five too. I think that was like their title or something. Well, they are warriors of light. I I remember it specifically in number one and specifically in number three, where it was like, you are the warriors of light. Because in number three, they talked about the warriors of darkness. Yeah, which was sweet. Uh, who saved the world from too much light. Too much and good. Then, and then <laughs> the warriors of light had to save the world from too much darkness. Yeah. And I always thought it would have been interesting to go back and play the warriors of darkness. That, that would have been, been sweet. Awesome, saving, yeah. the, saving the world from too much light. Too much good. Yeah. Too much. Yeah. Of the, so basically, you'd be playing the, the villains, which would be it's awesome. Not that, it's not that darkness was bad and that light was good. It's just that too much of either one was bad. Yeah, there was a balance. It's yeah. a. It was. It's a yin and yang thing. Yeah, that's the idea behind right. three. It's yeah. not. It's not the Christian kind of view where it's where light is represented by goodness or good is represented by light, and that bad is represented by dark. It's just a balance of light and dark. Yeah. Yeah. So nighttime and daytime kind of a thing. Yeah. 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 All right. So we have another question here from Light Sage, a black mage on the forum. And she asks, have you ever gotten trapped in an FF game? Huh. Oh, this what does she a, mean by This that? one's a lot more recent. It was yesterday. Okay. Why was it at the freaking bottom then? Okay. The, all right, whatever. I was wondering if anyone else has ever gotten trapped in an FF game. See, it's been a long time since I played FF9, but I enjoyed it when I did. So since FF9 is coming up in the podcast soon, I decided to get a head start on it. But the problem is that I don't remember that game nearly as well as FF10 because I've only played it once years and years ago so i was still on disc one and i had forgotten that dagger leaves your party after linda bloom once i got her as a healer i stopped buying so many potions but then she left the party and i headed off for the next dungeon well i'm stuck in there i've got to the save point at the end of the dungeon just before the boss i'm completely out of potions and phoenix down god this sounds like my final fantasy one experience Uh, yes it does (laughs) i can't beat the boss without any potions or healing means of any kind and i can't get back through to the start of the dungeon i'm trying to steal from monsters and flee but all i seem to get is a ton of ores so i'm basically stuck and we'll have to start the game over again has this ever happened to anyone else no (laughs) Good God. That yeah. sucks. Yeah, it does. I've had moments in the game where I saved, like when I was on the floating continent of six, 
and the first fight I got into was the dragons, which are way more brutal than anything else on that area, and I was like, holy fuck, did I just, like, kill my game here? I mean, I, I, if I can't even get to the first fight, well, how am I going to get through this? But 6 is very generous in where you die and you keep your experience. Of course, you don't get experience if you just lose, but you get a chance to come back, and it wasn't as bad as I thought. I think her best bet, put as the best armor that she can on him. And run. Or maybe no armor in order to increase your speed so that you can run. Yeah, I mean... And then run out of there and, you know, refill on your stuff. That's what I'm assuming that's what you can do. Right. So... And, and... That sucks. I stated my answer was that for... I've done that a few times myself, not nearly as extreme. Although I found that there are usually enough battle variants to make it out of just about any situation. But I haven't played all RPGs, so who knows? I mean, like I said, I, I do a lot of stuff like Joe is suggesting where... You just gotta keep running. I mean, you're gonna just hope, hope to God that you get the slow attacking enemies every time, and you can right. make it out. Unless, unless it's not worth your time. I mean, it it all just depends on how. I can it. name one time I was stuck, but it wasn't stuck because of enemies or anything. There, if you don't get shadow, like if you let shadow die, then you're gonna get um, what's her name, realm, in the, in that section of the game. Right. And I remember being really confused as to why when I went to the town that I was supposed to go to, a cutscene didn't happen. And it was because I didn't I didn't step on a specific tile that they assume that you're going to step on in another town in order for that event to take place. In order for you to find Realm later on. And it turns out to be a glitch in 6 that you know you can fix by just stepping on the right square. Hmm. Um... But if you go off of the path that they assume that you're going to go on, you know, you're kind of screwed over if you couldn't look up online going, help, which is what I had to do. Um, that's the only time I've ever been stuck that I can think of right now. I don't think I've ever been truly stuck in anything. Some bad memo files in Final Fantasy 2 near the end. Yeah. Where I've been like, oh my god, this was a bad place. But nothing where I couldn't get out of. Yeah. The Final Fantasy is pretty good about that. I don't think you can break most Final Fantasy games that easily. Except for maybe... Six. Six is the most buggy one that I know of. Yeah, it's still incredible. And there might be some, you know, versions of the older games that I hadn't played that were more buggy, but I wouldn't I wouldn't know about it. Yeah. Six... Yeah, Six had the dragon thing where you could uh, make them disappear and then cast Doom on them. Oh, yeah, you could break the game. That way, yeah, you could you could right. malfunction the game during yeah. certain fights. Right. So, that's great. Don't do that unless you know. Yeah, you're not supposed to use those on any real bosses. Yeah, just the optional ones. Just yeah, the optional dragons you can use that on the Doom. Uh, what was it? Vanish, Vanish, Vanish Doom. Vanish trick. Doom. Yeah. What that's about you, it. Caleb? Um, I have had a few. Uh, one of them was my boss fight with Evray. <laughs> Fucking Evray. Like, there was a save point on the ship, and you can't go back out of it, so, like, that, you, if you stay there, you're stuck, and if you can't defeat Evray, you can't move on. I think you could do random battles in that area, though. I don't think you could, because you were on the ship, yeah. and the only way to, the only fight was Evray. I think there was, like, a, a, there was like a cutscene, like, right after you I'm go in there. I'm not 100% sure, but I think there was some kind of way where that wasn't the only choice. Are you sure? I'm not. Because I not, only... I just said I'm only, not 100% well, sure, but I remember having trouble with him, but I did eventually beat him. Yeah. I I couldn't do it. I just couldn't. I, I tried, think, like, a hundred times. I think, like, on the deck of the ship, him. there were, like, random enemies that you could fight. There might have been. I don't remember any random enemies. I just remember just wrong, going straight to Evray, and I was like, how? Actually, how are you supposed to do this? I do kind of remember you going up to the... To get outside of the ship, and then they run up to Evray, and that's yeah, the they immediately is. run up to Evray, and that's like why I was like stuck because like there was huh. nothing else for me to do, and you couldn't go back and level up See? or anything that I tried to do. So. Yeah. And then the other time was in Dragon Quest VIII. Yeah, that's not a Final Fantasy. Uh, no, it's not Final Fantasy. Get out of it, it, no, 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 shut up about that Dragon Quest shit. They, they've, What's mentioned, the they've mentioned another RPG. No, 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 no. no. They've mentioned no, RPGs. It doesn't matter. It no. doesn't matter. It's a no, Dragon Quest game. going to be a dick about it. Man. I am going to be a dick about it. Don't you say that Dragon Quest you shit. You brought up Dragon Quest earlier? This, yeah, I brought up Dragon Quest. 
And I didn't comparison. bring up to answer a Final Fantasy it, question with a dragon it's relevant. quest. No, it's, no, 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 no. They're both made by Square. Yeah, but one was Square Now? Soft. Yeah. <laughs> Not then. Not yeah. your Enix version of Dragon Quest that you played. Yeah. Get All right. Dragon Quest shit out of here. <laughs> Um, I guess you can get stuck in Dragon Quest. All right, let's let's do this one. Okay. Wait, no, that one's brand new. So, what Final Fantasy character, if you could hang out with any FF character for Christmas? A couple days ago. Yeah. Let's say next Christmas. Well, next Christmas, okay. okay. Who would you choose to hang out with? Who would give the best presents and be the best person to have fun and just chill with? Or do you have other plans? Wink, wink. Quistus, wink, wink. <laughs> uh, Schweiss, you want to answer this one? Yes. Okay. <laughs> and yes is the answer. Quistus. But, uh, I don't know, my answer on the forum was pretty good. I, I would like to hang out with Oren, you know, just sit there and drink with him out of his little jug. <laughs> I think he'd be sweet. Or Quistus, because she's insanely hot. Who'd so. you hang out with, Joe? I'm having trouble with that one. I didn't actually look at the questions. I didn't scan the questions before starting this episode, so these are all questions. For shame. I I think that I would hang out with Reno and Rude. These guys, these guys seem like they'd be fun to hang out with. Reno and Rude? Yeah. I think I'd hang out with Rude, but Reno would probably drive me insane. <laughs> and I would be like, fuck that guy. I think I could have fun with Lulu, too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, we all could, I'm sure. And as far as gift giving goes, I'm going to go ahead and say Mustadio. I think that guy gives the best gifts. What? Okay. He's from he's from Tactics. Oh, okay. he gives he gives Fucking another God. He gives another character uh, a birthday present that's really awesome, but it's like a special cutscene that you have to work towards in this Who very would specific be the most way. most giving? I know. Yuna. Yuna. Yuna is the most yeah, selfless Yuna. person in the Final Fantasy series. Yuna probably would be yeah. So Yuna would probably give some good gifts. Plus, she seems like she has low self-esteem, <laughs> so Christmas might be a good night. I don't know if it's quite that low, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, we got another question? Um, yeah, let's do this one. It's a little bit longer, but uh, we can do it. Okay. Alright, it's titled All-Star Soundtrack from Mecha Messiah. Uh. So with all the talk recently about best and favorites or least favorites, I figured it's time for some fantasy booking. Okay. We can all agree, as was spoken on the previous podcast, that music, for the most part, is all that we have to attach ourselves to these games for a good chunk of them, yes. However, there's not one perfect soundtrack, and I feel it's more fun to speculate on your own fantasy lists. Here's what he proposes. Let's create Is it our final fantasy list? Just fantasy. That's what I said. Oh, okay. Here's what he proposes. Let's create go. the Ultima Final <laughs> Fantasy Ultimate soundtrack. I'll give the topics. And one song per Final Fantasy is one of the rule. Okay. The rule, I what guess. What are they? Here we go. Theme song. Our favorite theme song? Main theme? Uh, he says, associated with the credits opening, a.k.a. the arrangement, he says it's known as the Final Fantasy theme, but that's not the Final Fantasy theme. Yeah, that's the one he's saying. Right. That one's probably my favorite. That is the main Final Fantasy theme. No, the There's main theme main is the Final Fantasy the main theme is the one that plays dun, normally dun, at the very dun, end. Dun, 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 dun. I think they are both main themes. I'm not sure which one is. Well, more the one main. that one is the one that's always been the main theme, though. The other that's one's the not always. map theme on Final Fantasy One, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, and it's so the main theme of Final Fantasy One is do 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 do. So that's probably the main theme of Final Fantasy is the arpeggio. I don't know. I always thought, I think so. Uh, that's the one I like more. So I would go with that one. Okay. Well, which from which game? I think yeah. that's what he's saying. It's twelve. I guess 12? it's great. Yeah, it's an updated okay. version. What about you, Caleb? I would stick with Final Fantasy One's little intro. Okay. Yeah, I like kind of the eight bit sound version of it. It's pretty cool. All right. Overworld theme. I'll agree with Caleb. Final Fantasy 1. Fine. Fuck you guys. <laughs> Overworld theme. I'm going to go with his choice and Terra's theme from Final Fantasy 6. God damn it. You took mine too. Yeah, that would probably be mine. <laughs> All right. Well, we're good for okay. that. <laughs> the Terra, Terra from Final Fantasy 6. Best world theme. Yes, very much so. Town theme. He chose Fisherman's Not Horizon. Not Final Fantasy 8. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh my god, the S star theme. I fucking hate that song. <laughs> yeah, uh, I say Cosmo Canyon. For best town theme? Yes. We've talked about Cosmo Canyon way too much. It's awesome. <laughs> it is uh, a pretty good town theme. About. Best town theme. That's... That's kind of a rough question. I'm not sure. Do you have a specific town that you enjoy the most? As far as its theme goes? I mean, the Fisher- Fisherman Horizon theme is pretty good. But the only one that I could think of that truly sticks out is Cosmo Canyon. <laughs> I think it's because Caleb brought it up. No, I, I do remember Cosmo Canyon the most. Instead of like, I'm trying to think of like other town themes and the only one that i can really think of right now is cosmo canyon from a specific town i don't even remember fisherman huh. horizons yeah it's it's okay i mean i have most, a better most one. of eights is i have a better one for final fantasy 8 so that's why i'm not gonna agree with them at all on the fisherman's horizon plus it was kind of forgettable i mean it was it wasn't bad it wasn't like esthar when i was like oh hmm. why figaro castle Okay. Motherfuck. Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. Figaro's. I think I'm gonna go right now. That's what's in my head. It's All right. Well, two v one. So. Yeah. So. It's not official. I mean, <laughs> it doesn't matter. It's just our opinions. Okay. All right. So primary battle theme. Ooh, which battle theme do you like the most? Yeah. Ooh, this is an interesting question. I like those who fight further from seven. Yeah, that one's a good one. That one's a good one. But oh, we already used seven. I think seven. I like Final Fantasy X's battle theme the most. Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, that's pretty good. Dun, 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 you know dun, what? Dun, dun, I don't think he even followed his own rules because he's got two Final Fantasy Oh man, shame on you, making me sad. Unless I read oh, it wrong. Oh, is his rules to only have one of each Final Fantasy? Because I think we broke it. <laughs> we didn't break it. Uh, each Final Fantasy has to be represented at least once. Oh, it has to be. Well, that's not... We're not going to be able to do that. Okay, we're not going to be able to do that. Sorry. So we'll, we'll one do each. what we can. Okay. Okay. Right, so secondary battle theme. Secondary battle theme? He says the man with the machine gun Final Fantasy VIII. What does he mean by secondary battle theme? I'm trying to think right now. Is that like a Genova theme? Maybe no, like I don't think it matters. I think it's any boss. battle theme that we would choose as our second battle theme. Like, if we were to create a soundtrack... Uh, oh, okay. So we can choose any battle theme, as far as I can... I kind of I kind of like Seymour's battle theme. Yeah. yeah? Yeah, it's actually pretty good. Yeah. I could get behind that. Seymour from Final Fantasy. Another one from ten. Yeah, another one from ten. <laughs> I'm breaking his rules. Can't do it. All right, so boss battle theme... Did you guys have a secondary battle theme? You guys didn't answer that. I'm fine with the 10. Seymour's is good. Seymour? Yeah, I like Seymour's. Boss okay. battle theme, I'm going to say... He says Fallen Angel from Final Fantasy XIV, A Realm Reborn, which I'm not sure if I've heard. Oh, gonna... I have fought a couple bosses, so I guess maybe I have. I don't know. What do you guys want? i, I got to remember the name for this one. Uh... For a boss battle, I love Genova. I do like Genova. I think that Genova's name is a really just good one. Fucking sweet. Uh, God, I love, I love the Genova theme. Like the yeah, that's sweet. That's I all kinda, I can say. I kind of like the one that comes when Sephiroth uh, calls Meteor. No, when he just appears and it's like the. Right. That'd be sweet. Genova does show up with that music too. She does, yeah. Okay. That's kind of like her theme. It's it's the not. other one. <laughs> so male lead theme. He says hope. Yeah. From Final hope? Fantasy thirteen. Trying to think of a male lead theme. Locks from six. Yeah, locks from six. Hmm. I gotta think about this one. I never. I have trouble with track names on these things because I never look them up. Yeah, it's tough for track names, and it's tough because they use the character's theme uh, in other places. Right. So it does make it difficult. Hmm. 
So he's saying hope. Hmm. He also says he's stretching for this one. Male lead theme. Male lead theme. See, now you got me... What Can we use, like, any song? It doesn't have to be, like, a male lead <laughs> well, theme? Well, kind of, I guess. Because then I would just pick, like, the, the theme from... Eight, like when you go to Odin's Tower, the one that always reminds me of Beauty and the Beast. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, damn it. I was going to do something else for the final boss. Okay. That's what were okay. you going to do for the final boss? Um, don't worry about it. I'll do it for the female lead. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Uh, male lead theme. Uh, let's go with... Uh, shit. <laughs> Figaro Castle Part Two. <laughs> <laughs> Always the Figaro Castle. Well, we can give it to Figaro Castle because okay. we outed it last All right. time. All right. All right. So female lead theme. I'm gonna go Sorceress's theme from Eight. Says you. Ah, that's theme. a good one. That is a good one. Sorceress's theme from Eight is like one of my favorite but tracks. Female lead. <laughs> if she's evil. She's it foreboding works. female lead song. <laughs> yeah. Dark female. Female lead. I like Eris's theme. Horse. I mean, we already used Terra's as a map theme, so I think Eris' theme for female lead theme. Yeah. I realize most of my answers have been 7 and (laughs) 10. They got good soundtracks. They do have good soundtracks. So if you guys want to put up your own uh, own thoughts for this, and you can play by uh, Mecha Messiah's rules, feel free to go to our forum and answer that question. And I think that is going to be it for this episode. Stay tuned right after this. We're going to have the nominees. Dun, dun, dun. For the first annual UFF Podcast Awards. Is that what I called it before? Is that what know. I'm calling it now? That's what it is. <laughs> it's it's something. It All right. Something. Well, guys, we'll see you. We'll see you next time. Enjoy the grind. Okay, so as everybody knows, next week is the best of episode. It's yes. the 2014 UFF Podcast Awards from UFF for UFF and its listeners. Mm-hmm. Are you excited, Twice? Yeah, I'm pretty pumped. All right. So, we're going to go over the nominees right now. For everyone, Best Final Fantasy Podcast. The nominees, Aetherite Radio, ARR Pod, Damn Chocobo, Damn. Final Fantasy Union, Limit Break Radio, and Ultima Final Fantasy. We made the list. (laughs) Yeah, we did. Woo! All right. For best 2014 Final Fantasy release, Lightning Returns Final Fantasy 13, Final Fantasy Agito, Final Fantasy Artnix Drive, Theater Rhythm Final Fantasy Curtain Call, Final Fantasy Explorers, Final Fantasy Worldwide Words, and Final Fantasy VII, G-Bike. That's for everybody to vote on. Get on the website and vote on those. All right. For the show, best Ultima Final Fantasy episode. Caleb, what are the nominees? The nominees are (laughs) Final Fantasy III. Dun, dun, dun. Final Fantasy V. Dun, dun, dun. Final Fantasy VI. Oh, yeah. And Spotlight Hironobu Sakaguchi. That is a good episode. It was enjoyable. But with every good episode comes a really bad... Well, hopefully not every good episode. <laughs> so the next category for the listeners is worst episode. <laughs> worst Ultima Final Fantasy yeah, episode. Yeah, Ultima Final Fantasy <laughs> For the sound quality, Final Fantasy (laughs) 1. For an overall bad attitude, Final Fantasy 15 predictions and super sexy swinging fan fiction 1. Religion in FF. Notably because everything that we said there had been covered before. Mm -hmm. And the cooking episode entitled... What was it entitled again? It was Eris... Aerith cast haste on... Ta- Her- Aerith casting haste on Aerith, member of, of Tantalus. Tantalus. Yes. That's right. So those are our four nominees for worst 
episode. And then we got a little uh, we got little sound clips here for you. We got two categories that you're gonna hear in a second: best rant and best impersonation. Let's get those over with. Yes. And the nominees for best rant are Kanzen Lingo. As she leaned back, his head poked in between her neither, neither lips. <laughs> neither lips. <laughs> <laughs> That's... I wish to explore your neither lips. <laughs> <laughs> neither, neither of them. Yeah, none, none. Celest realized Tara was lined up and pushed her hips back, forcing Tara, what's Setzer's... What's with all the hip talk? I don't know. God. Forcing... A bunch of hipsters. To make better leverage as she pumped on Barrett. Pumping. God fucking pumping. Every fucking time. It's this like, guy cannot stop the word pumping. I think he likes the book 1Q84, the very end, where it's like he pumped her lightly or some shit. Like one of the last lines. Well, did they continuously use the word pumping? No, no. Pumping was probably no. used like twice, I'm sure. <laughs> and the book is 1,200 pages long. Yeah. Tara leaned over to get them and felt, and felt the felt brush on her nipple through her dress. Felt, Ooh. felt, felt, felt. <laughs> I have seen the word felt like ten times in the last two paragraphs. He, he likes his felt. I guess. She pulled her card back and felt herself getting cut. <laughs> fucking damn it. What a beautiful piece of work, really. Yeah. Kanzen's an artist of hips and felt. I think he lost his virginity on a fucking felt table. <laughs> this is just too much. He's like... <laughs> And the felt was awesome. <laughs> it was all awesome. Crossing the line. Dude. Okay, uh, uh, Celis tried to keep her voice steady. It's it's only natural, Brown. But besides, you turned 18 a few months ago, right? Oh! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ, that was close. I was like, what the fuck? Fuck? What the fuck? She's a kid! Oh, oh that was horrible. <sighs> it's still pretty bad, but... Oh, oh God. Oh. Why would he even put that in there? God, fuck, fuck Kanzen and his fucking piece of shit writing. Oh, man. Oh, shit. Um... You know what? Fuck it. I'm not gonna read this shit with Realm. It's making me sick. Uh. Oh, what the fuck? Uh. Oh, hot gook. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm gonna skip the rest of Chapter Five. You guys can read it if you want. Um, basically, Realm. It looks like uh, joins in. Joins in on the on the on the rest of the action. So, uh, yeah. That's it. <laughs> you know what? I think we probably should not read the rest of this. Cloud in wheelchair. Pretty much. So it's like a weird thing for him to have just <laughs> completely broken character. Oh my god, that fucking noise. <laughs> you're, talking, you're talking about Cloud in the uh Yes, when he's in, in the, the wheelchair. wheelchair. I don't know what that fucking noise is supposed to be. <laughs> but you know what? I was wondering the same thing. I'm like, you know, the first time I played this game, this was cool. But the second time, I'm like, where is that noise coming from? I, is he on a super squeaky chair? The, the wheelchair isn't moving, and he's just bobbing his head. And I think he's too retarded to even make noise. So I don't know where it's coming Maybe that from. that was him breathing. Maybe he's, like, I snoring. Went, I was playing it on my computer, and, like, the, in the headphones, it was, like, really loud, and prominent, and just constant. And it's like, what the fuck? Fuck is this? <laughs> it was like the screaming of the planet too. It's like, yeah! and it was like, oh my god, make it stop! The planet's in pain. I didn't want it to be in pain anymore. I wanted to save it for real because it was bugging the shit out of me. Female host. Yeah, and the the thing is, is with the the other show that has a female on there, I don't think she adds anything to the show. Maybe the female perspective I could see. The British guy is really the only guy that's in that podcast. Yeah, she just says... She... Okay, when when they have an interview... Caleb, I'm going to ask you a question. What did you do today? I, uh... I woke up. Right. Took a shower. Uh-huh. Dried off. Oh, yeah. Got dressed. Oh, cool. Sat around. Oh, nice. <laughs> Yeah, see, that's... That's what she does. 
essentially. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, we don't need to necessarily bash. It's just, how does that bring a female perspective to the show? Yeah. It's just. <laughs> and the nominees for best impersonation are Caleb Schweiss as Mog as Dave Mustaine. Good afternoon, Lady Tara. She smiled. Hello, Mog. What brings you to our humble cave today? I was just walking, thinking, and I ended up here. I see. You turned to the others. Kupo. They seemed to understand everything she said <laughs> from that one word. Tara laughed. <laughs> How do you say all of that with the same word? Kupo is a sacred word. It's how we communicate. If you can't communicate the way we do, it sounds like Koopo to you. How do you communicate? Monk thought to her. Telepathically. (laughs) The word Koopo signals us to open our minds in a way. way. Joe de Gaulier as Lauren from Final Fantasy Union, an interview. Caleb, I'm going to ask you a question. What did you do today? I, uh, I woke up. Right. Took a shower. Uh huh. Dried off. Oh yeah. Got dressed. Oh cool. Sat around. Oh nice. <laughs> yeah, see that's <laughs> that's what she does. <laughs> and in the music categories, we have best original song, original opening theme Live from Salt Lake City, Utah. The opening theme, version two. This is the ultimate. Super sexy swingin' fan fiction, Ultima Final Fantasy podcast version. Ooh, yeah, baby. Super sexy swingin' fan fiction. Super sexy swingin' fan fiction version. <laughs> Ultima Final Fantasy. And our last category for the Ultima Final Fantasy Awards goes to Best Parody Song. The nominees are Tactics You Might Need The Question Segment Question News <laughs> Did You Know Spot the FF Hajime Tabata Hajime Tabata And we have some awards we're gonna shell out also from us to you Best iTunes reviewer, most active Twitter follower, best forum member, and best Facebook user as far as our followers. And we'll handpick those. We have no nominees for that. Nope. That's straight from us. It's straight from us. Not that you guys who don't get that award, not that you're not special to us. Yeah. Definitely. You're just not the most special. (laughs) (laughs) All right, guys. Go to ultimafinalfantasy.com right now and get your butt voting. Yes. Okay? We will see you guys in a week. This has been another production of Ultima Final Fantasy, the ultimate Final Fantasy podcast. The show is produced by Joseph de Gaulier and Caleb Schweiss with music and editing by Joseph de Gaulier, parodies and clips from their respective authors, of course. You can get all of our episodes as well as our Let's Plays at ultimafinalfantasy.com. You can also contact us on Twitter at UFF Podcast as well as our contact page on our website. Be sure to subscribe and review our podcast. Your reviews may get read on the show. And look forward to the next episode of Ultima Final Fantasy, the ultimate Final Fantasy podcast.